Within cosmology, we can also look at the development of the universe. In other words, you know, what might the fate of the universe be? Now, when, since we know that it's expanding, uh, maybe I'll say this, we might, we might expect for the universe to do something like this. I mean, if, if there were no forces, so let's just say the universe was expanding which seems to sh it seems to come from the big bang theory. So if there were no forces then we could actually expect that the universe might just expand at the same rate. Cuz the universe would expand at the same rate. Now what do I mean by that? I mean that if we were looking at a graph of the universe, so let's say we did uh, some arbitrary graph here of, let's say, time and size. Now we don't know what values to put here. Uh, we don't really know what values to put here. We would expect, well, at some time the size was zero. And then, of course, if it's expanding, well, we might expect it to just expand at some sort of constant rate here. We might expect that. And of course, this right here, maybe that would represent now. You know, that would be us right now, whatever arbitrary size we are. So we're at some size now, and at some point we were smaller, and at some point we'll be larger. Well, that's what we would expect. Right? That seems to make sense. So if there were no other forces, that's what we would expect. But let's add the effect of gravity so we know this is something that we know here that mass um, well it's affected by gravity okay, we will say that so mass is affected by gravity and why because there are other masses there remember every mass attracts every other mass and the force, the attractive, uh, sorry, the gravitational force, uh, should be attractive. In other words, something with mass should attract something else with mass. That's something we know from universal law of gravitation. I mean, they, we've even known that since Newton's time. So that's, uh, you know, hundreds of years ago. So the force should be attractive. Um, so this is the key thing right here, so we would expect it to slow down gravity, or slow down the expansion. The expansion. So this just comes from our own understanding of physics. And again, remember, this is called astrophysics for a reason, because we're looking at astronomy, but also using and comparing our own ideas about physics and trying to apply them here. So, when there were no forces, we expected the universe to do sort of size versus time, some sort of straight line. What would happen then if you have attractive forces? Well, if there were attractive forces, that means every object in the universe is going to attract every other object in the universe because they all have mass. That would mean we would expect it to slow down. That means we would expect the expansion to do something like this. So do you notice here it is concave down? That's the key thing here. This is actually a calculus term we use. You know, we just say it sort of opens downwards here. So instead of being a straight line, you know, where before it was sort of some sort of straight line going sort of like this right here, trying to draw a straight line here, it's actually going to be expected to be concave down, some sort of curved down shape here. And of course, now would represent wherever you want to put it. That's what we would expect with gravity. So that's fully what we expect. Now the question is, by how much? Well, we have something that we call the critical density. So we have something called a critical density, which is actually written with, well, density is written with the symbol rho normally. So we're going to say rho c. That's going to represent the critical density. And this right here is going to be, I mean, obviously, this is some sort of mass over some sort of volume. So in order to know this, you'd have to know the mass of the entire universe and the volume of the entire universe. This would actually be measured in kilograms, because that's mass, over a volume, which is in meters cubed. So a kilogram per meter cubed. That's why we put the negative exponent there. 
That's what we have here. Critical density would be some sort of thing like this. But what's important then is this. The critical density, um, that is, that's the density of the universe. Some people write universe with a capital U. But uh, density of the universe that is needed to stop the expansion. Now what this really means, I mean if we look back up here, this tells us this is concave down, right? I mean, does it go all the way down, or does it just sort of go up and keep going forever, or does it actually sort of stop the expansion? In other words, at some time, it'll never get bigger. And it turns out that is the definition of critical density. I'm going to make this row C look a little bit prettier here. But that is the definition of critical density. Okay, it's rho C. That is the density that you need in the universe in order to stop the expansion completely. That's sort of the, that's the definition of critical density. Now the problem is, we don't know the actual uh, mass of the universe, and we don't know the volume of the actual universe, so it's hard to calculate the actual density of the universe. But, it turns out, one can, through some pretty neat ways, you can actually calculate the critical density of the universe, though. So scientists have actually calculated this value. In other words, what density universe must have in order to stop the expansion. Which is great, I suppose. Then you could say, oh, awesome, that means then that we can know what's going to happen. But we don't, because the problem is, although we know what the critical density must be in order to stop the expansion, we have no idea what the actual density of the universe is. In order to know that, we would have to know the mass of the universe. We don't know. And we'd have to divide that by the volume of the universe. We don't know. So there's, there's a problem. But see, it's a kind of a neat idea, at least, that we can look at the critical density. And so we can look at three different situations. So three different scenarios. And I put this, you know, or are there only three? This is just a bad picture of me making a stupid face a few years ago. But, uh, okay, we might have an open universe. So I'm going to draw you what that would look like. An open universe does something like this. So this here is time. And this here is size. By the way, all three of these universe models, we're going to have the same thing here. Time, an arbitrary size. In a closed universe, we're going to have the same exact thing. Time and size. Now what's going to happen is this. Um, in this case, with the open universe, we might have where um, we don't have enough mass. So if we don't have much mass here, we're going to have some sort of situation where it sort of it expands forever. So maybe it does something like, maybe I'll draw with blue here. So it does something like this over here, it's sort of, it's still curving down. We call this open. The key thing here is that the density of the universe, the actual density of the universe, must be less than the critical density. What that means is that we don't have enough mass in the actual universe in order to stop the expansion. Because we don't have enough, it's going to be open. And the key thing here is that it keeps expanding. That's the key thing happening here. So although the rate slows down, it still keeps expanding. That's the situation with this first one here. Now, we have number two, though. We have a flat universe. What does that do? Well, that's if we have some sort of density, or some sort of value of the universe where this right here is actually a dotted line. This is going to be an asymptote. And we call this right here flat universe. And that's when the density of the universe is exactly equal to the critical density. So what does that mean? That means expansion stops eventually. So these are sort of the ideas behind what the universe might do. Okay, so that's sort of the second idea behind what might be going on, or what might happen. And the third idea was, what if it's a closed universe? Well, that's if we have something like this. The universe goes up, it expands, but then it actually comes back down again. So this one right here, we call this closed. And that's when we have more than the critical density. The idea is that we have more mass in the universe, so we have enough mass to not only stop the expansion, because that, that tells you how much mass you would need, essentially, assuming the same volume. 
So you need exactly the right amount of mass here in order to stop the expansion, which means just one atom less, you know, and you would keep expanding forever. Just one atom more than this, and you would eventually have a closed universe. So here we say, um, well, here we'd say it actually, you know, expansion reverses, we could say. The expansion reverses. Now this model here has actually been nicknamed the big crunch because if you look at this what it means is that over some time remember now in all these situations let's just draw us here this is sort of this is now some sort of arbitrary size we don't really know what it is but let's just say it's now and some sort of thing right here we actually though know this distance right here we know how old the universe is all the different models and all the different things seem to always lead to the same number, which is 13.7 billion years. So for whatever reason, the universe seems to be that old. It seems to be about 13.7 billion years old. Problem is, we don't know the scale of this, and we don't know the size of the universe. But these were the three ideas behind what the universe might actually be doing. And up until not very long ago, this was thought to be correct. 